He's so bloody fast, this car. It's a very long season, very tough season. Anything can happen. In 1999, Ferrari were dealt a severe blow by the loss of Michael Schumacher after his accident at Silverstone. Eddie Irvine then fought the championship with vigor. Schumacher's stunning return in Malaysia helped secure the constructor's title for Ferrari. But it was Mika Hakkinen lifting the driver's championship trophy. Now the battle is revived. He looks to 2000 for his third consecutive world title. Just have to take it easy. Schumacher endeavours to become the first Ferrari champion since 1979. Drive fast, don't crash. Brazilian Rubens Barrichello takes the second seat at Ferrari, moving from the now obsolete Stewart outfit. If I can fight, to be on the podium, but to, to win the race, they're gonna go mad. <laughs> Eddie Irvine joins fledgling team Jaguar alongside Johnny Herbert. We will do it. And attracting major interest, Brit Jensen Button arrives at Williams BMW. We're gonna, we're gonna give it some large. The winter break over, Australia is the first to witness the culmination to months of testing. Expectations are high for the opening qualifying session of 2000. 20 minutes into the hour, Mika Hakkinen opens up the challenge for pole. McLaren still look like the team to beat. A confident David Coulthard is also on the pace, yearning for his first world title this year. Michael Schumacher was equally as fast in the morning's practice and is eager to regain that speed in qualifying. New Ferrari driver Rubens Barrichello also responds to the McLaren's time until he makes a critical error. After smoothing out understeer problems, Hakkinen re-emerges a fraction faster than his teammate. Schumacher begins a lap in the closing stages. This is his last chance to gain pole. After a promising final run, Coulthard throws it all away at turn 15. The accident brings out red flags and ruins what may have been Schumacher's best lap. A delighted Mika Hakkinen escapes with pole position. A ceremony styled in typical Formula One fashion graces Melbourne, Australia on race day. Regardless of McLaren's domination on the front row, both drivers know Ferrari are competitive. Schumacher shows supreme confidence in his car and Barrichello was strong in qualifying. As the race gets underway, both McLarens make an excellent start. The Ferraris jostle for position with Heinz Harald Frensen and Jarno Trulli. Sandwiched between the two Jordans, Barrichello is relegated to fifth by the first corner. Schumacher slots in behind Coulthard, while an impressively quick Frenson takes fourth. The rest of the field runs side by side. In Jaguar's debut race, Johnny Herbert's car is tipped off the track, although it's a clutch problem that causes his retirement after one lap. 
Schumacher keeps the pressure on. His pit board reveals how close the German is to Coulthard. Competition from Frensen is left behind as all three front runners streak ahead. Overtaking opportunities are few and far between at Albert Park. Pedro de la Rosa puts a good move on Irvine at the end of lap two. Unfortunately, the achievement is short-lived. Four laps later, the Arrow suffers front suspension failure and hits the wall. Attempting to avoid the crash, Eddie Irvine loses control of his Jaguar, stalling in the spin. The safety car is brought out while the debris is cleared. It's a disappointing finish for the new team. The presence of the safety car puts a temporary halt to any overtaking. At the restart, Coulthard makes an early pit stop, his McLaren misfiring. A small fire igniting under the engine cover goes out as he pulls away, but jeopardizes his race. Mercedes Motorsport director Norbert Haug sees the Scott manage just a few corners before the car retires with pneumatic valve failure. Barrichello is now fourth, but is still paying for his tardy start. More drama for McLaren as smoke pours out of Hakkinen's Mercedes engine. Schumacher's prayers have been answered. Hakkinen cruises into retirement and the German takes the lead. Another pneumatic valve failure ends the English team's race. An extensive winter testing program does not mean the car's infallible. McLaren's misfortune gives Schumacher a golden opportunity to win. The German is unlikely to let it slip through his fingers. It seems only a well-executed pit stop is going to get Barrichello past Frensen. The Brazilian will rely on master strategist Ross Braun to help him leapfrog the Jordan. Trulli's race is over on lap 35. His Mugen Honda engine decides to blow in a big way. Jordan adds to their disappointment four laps later when a gear selection problem forces Frensen out of the race. This frees up Barrichello, who becomes the quickest man on the track. On lap 45, the Ferrari debutant moves out of Schumacher's slipstream to take the lead. But all is not as it seems. The Brazilian has been switched to a two-stop strategy. Schumacher moves up again. With both Jordans gone, Ross Braun's tactic has cost Barrichello any chance of a win. Ralph Schumacher's third place is a great start for Williams BMW. The Schumacher family looks set to monopolize the podium. Emotions are highly charged by Ferrari's 1-2 finish in the first race. The team finally seem ready to take on the mighty McLaren. Imagine how long we're in Ferrari. This is the fifth time we try uh, to win this uh, Australian Grand Prix and be competitive from the beginning of the season. Thanks really to the guys, they have done a fantastic job. I mean, not just the car is reliable, but it's so bloody fast, this car. I'm really, really delighted to drive this car. A win at Australia had eluded Schumacher throughout his career. Barrichello hasn't finished as high as second since 1997. A good Ferrari debut for the Brazilian. The Australian Grand Prix was a bittersweet experience for Mika Salo. Having finished sixth, he was later disqualified. His Sauber's front wing end plates were 20 millimeters too close to the center line of the wheels. Yeah, well, it's disappointing because the points are never easy to get, so it would have been nice to keep them. Jensen Button was the center of attention at Albert Park. The youngest British driver to ever start a Grand Prix gave a strong performance and was on course for a points finish until his BMW engine failed. No, it's been a great race, starting in 21st and getting up to 6th. Um, it's just been a good race, a good, uh, good start to my career in F1, I think.
Brazilian Rubens Barrichello receives a warm welcome from Sao Paulo. For once, other top drivers are sharing the limelight. Barrichello ran second quickest to Hakkinen during the practice session, a performance he now improves on. Jano Trulli also showed potential in practice, but he ends his first qualifying lap in the gravel, losing him precious time. There's no room for complacency in qualifying. Hakkinen feels a faster time is possible. Schumacher's comeback ends in some off-roading. The next car he sits in will be the spare. Turbulence from the cars creates a unique problem. Alessi is hit by a collapsed advertising hoarding, causing a temporary halt to proceedings. It's never over until it's over. So uh, I think the important thing is just to be uh, calm. You've got to look at uh, highly motivated Barrichello, but Barrichello's only a tenth behind Michael, so uh, Michael's more than capable of uh, putting back the time. We've just got to be careful. Good advice from team boss Ron Dennis, but unexpected rain prevents any faster times being set. Mika can now relax. Overcast and hot is how the drivers and fans find Sao Paulo on race day. Excitable Barrichello fans shake the circuit foundations, chanting and banging drums in honor of their Brazilian hero. The noise just serves to enhance the tension. McLaren drivers tie up the front row. Jaguar show promise with Irvine starting sixth. An empty garage marks Sauber's absence from the race. A problem first occurred in practice. A crash was caused by Salo's rear wing becoming unfastened. Both drivers suffered similar incidents, resulting from the bumpy track. Salvo reluctantly withdrew from the race on safety grounds. As the lights dim, it's a good start for Hakkinen, who fights off the attentions of Schumacher. The German deprives Coulthard of second, who was slower off the grid. It's not the start McLaren needed. Both Ferraris are on two-stop strategies and are subsequently lighter on fuel. Schumacher doesn't waste time staring at Hakkinen's rear wing. He passes at the start of lap two. Showing the same desire to get on, Barrichello makes a similar move on Coulthard. By the end of lap two, the Brazilian is up into third place. From 12th on the grid, Jano truly carves through the field. He seems to have hooked up the Jordan better than his teammate Frensen. Schumacher consistently builds upon his lead, gaining the advantage before the pit stops. Trulli's qualifying problems are slowly being redeemed. Fisichella is next to be passed. Hakkinen's fuel-laden McLaren has held up Barrichello for several laps, but impressing his home crowd gives the incentive. The Brazilian eases past and up into second place. Mercedes power is no match for Ferrari today. Overestimating the Jaguar, Irvine crashes out from sixth marking his second retirement in as many races. Despite an aggressive drive, Barrichello cannot catch Schumacher. On lap 27, his Ferrari is in trouble. The car is crippled by hydraulic failure, destroying any chance of repeating Ferrari's Melbourne result. There's concern, too, at McLaren. Hakkinen, leading after Schumacher's first pit stop, pulls into the garage on lap 30 after his Mercedes engine dies. Schumacher regains the lead with no obvious challenger in sight. Having lost the use of third gear, Coulthard can do little more than hang on to second.
Flavio Briatore is a new face at Benetton, but he's not that unfamiliar. Princeton is now fourth and ahead of his teammate. The Italian's charge was stilted when his new tyres failed to come up to pressure. Following his pit stop, Verstappen has dropped to seventh, a position Button also has his eye on. The F1 new boy shows great potential on a track he doesn't know well. He moves closer to the points on lap 55. Since Hakkinen's retirement, Schumacher's minor concern has been falling oil pressure. The Ferrari survives to seize victory, reiterating the team's competitiveness. McLaren take Coulthard into second, but must rectify reliability problems if they are to beat Ferrari this year. Thanks, guys. You have done a great job. Yeah, well done again, Michael. Great job. It was quite entertaining. I mean, it doesn't happen too often that you have between the leaders a real fight and overtaking, so I enjoyed that. It was a long time ago. Michael Schumacher shows star qualities yet again. Fisichella scores Benetton's highest result since Canada 1999. After finishing second in the Brazilian Grand Prix, David Coulthard was disqualified. Stewards deemed the McLaren's front wing was seven millimeters too low. Our defense was the nature of the circuit caused us to be outside the regulations. Clearly they didn't feel we had a strong, strong enough case, so we have to, to live with that. And, and uh, make sure hopefully it doesn't happen again. Imola is a tranquil town. That is until Formula One invades for the San Marino Grand Prix. The deafening noise is as much from the Ferrari fans as it is from the engines. David Coulthard usually goes well at this circuit. It is no surprise, therefore, that he has the fastest time after the first set of qualifying laps. Mika Hakkinen attacks the corners and curbs. He's the only driver on soft compound tyres and is quicker through the sectors than Coulthard. In front of an adoring crowd, Michael Schumacher makes his final run. It's by no means a perfect lap, but with few minutes of the session left, a Ferrari tops the timesheets. As the last minute ticks away, an excellent third sector helps Hakkinen back into pole position. A red hue emanates from around the assembled Tifosi, all hoping for a Ferrari win, but Minka Hakkinen has other ideas. Engines drown out the crowd, and it's all systems go. Schumacher veers in front of Coulthard to compensate for a sluggish start. Hakkinen pulls clear of the squabbling pack behind. Blocked by both Ferraris, Coulthard has to back off, surrendering his place to Barrichello. A lightning start by Villeneuve puts him from ninth to fifth at the first corner. The two Jordans of Trulli and Frensen follow. Four laps later, one Jordan is already in the pits. Frensen's car jams in sixth gear, forcing the German into early retirement. Eddie Jordan relies on Trulli for results, but he's hard pushed to find a way past Villeneuve. Barrichello defends against Coulthard, who's eager to get going. Michael steadily pursues Hakkinen, but positions look unlikely to change. With most cars running the same strategy and overtaking so difficult, more is required to get ahead. Hakkinen has a four-second lead. 
In for his second pit stop, Villeneuve links up with the BAR crew. Outstanding teamwork seems them perform one of the fastest stops of the race. For the past 13 laps, the Canadian had been challenging Ralf Schumacher for fifth place. The German is now out of fuel and out of the race on lap 45. Having broken his crutch straps on the grid, Barrichello's drive may be uncomfortable, but it doesn't account for his lack of pace. An impatient Coulthard is still unable to pass. Hakkinen pits after a very short middle stint. His Mercedes engine has momentarily cut out on the track. His lead is down to two seconds. The McLaren's electronic glitch turns the race situation into Schumacher's favor, and he now has a chance to stay ahead. An opportunity also arises for Coulthard as he and Barrichello pit on the same lap. McLaren service is faultless. Although it's incredibly close, Coulthard squeezes in front of Rubens, finally taking third place from the Ferrari. Jean Todd waits on Schumacher, who has made good progress in the clear laps before his pit stop. The Ferrari is stationary for just 6.2 seconds. Ron Dennis sees it's enough for Schumacher to resume the lead. Hakkinen follows up some three seconds adrift. There's a distinct feeling of deja vu. Schumacher leads for the third consecutive race. It's now evident that there is damage to the McLaren's floor, sustained earlier when Hakkinen ran over debris. Despite this, he hovers over Schumacher's shoulder until the very last turn. Finishing a second behind, Hakkinen may have won if it weren't for the imbalance in his car. Instead, it's a dream result for Michael Schumacher and the fans. We did a fold the Tifosis. I hope everybody uh, is, uh, is happy with this, as, as far as I saw outside, uh, it looks like. So, so do I. Now we look forward to the next one. Well done, Michael. That's great. Very well done. Schumacher takes his third successive win. Third time lucky for Hakkinen and Coulthard. Both reach the podium in San Marino. Mika Hakkinen was conspicuous by his absence from the championship points table. He now sits equal fourth, 24 points behind Schumacher. Ferrari also streak ahead in the constructors' title, 29 points clear of McLaren. Imola took time out to acknowledge the 100th Grand Prix of Jaguars Eddie Irvine and Jordan's Heinz Harold Frensen. The pair's debut in 94 and 93 was with the Sauber and Jordan teams. The FIA also announced a new ruling. We've said we're no longer prepared to accept speed limiters on the cars in the pit lane. It's going to be up to the driver to make sure he doesn't exceed the speed limit. We have reason to believe that the speed limiting devices were also being used to assist the cars at the start. The use of speed limiters is detectable as they open the car's fuel flap and illuminate the rear light. The same electronics could be used to simulate traction control. Formula One makes an earlier than usual call on Silverstone, which has been subject to persistent rain. Exceeding Williams' expectations so far this season, all eyes are on Jensen Button. His first appearance on home ground begins well. Rubens Barrichello puts in some early runs and temporarily holds pole. As the damp track rapidly dries, Schumacher bides his time. Jordan have made small aerodynamic changes to their cars, which seem to benefit Frensen. In the dying minutes of qualifying, Barrichello snatches back pole position.
Mika Hakkinen's run is slowed when yellow flags are waved for Jano truly spun Jordan. The Finn does not better third. Having waited so long for the best track conditions, Schumacher just fails to start another lap before the chequered flag. Ferrari's first 2,000 pole belongs to Barrichello. As the countdown to the British Grand Prix gets underway, celebrities and fans are all gripped by F1 fever. Some drivers find time for a smile before taking their positions in the unusual grid formation. The adrenaline gets pumping as the lights illuminate. At the queue, the cars jump into action. Michael Schumacher has a disastrous start from fifth. Button and Villeneuve both get past and he's side by side with brother Ralph into cops. A lacklustre performance from the championship leader. Barrichello leads Frentzen, Coulthard, Hakkinen and Button. Ralf Schumacher ahead of his brother has also taken Villeneuve. Both Williams in the points marks the team's best performance this season. Try as he might, Michael Schumacher cannot find a way past Villeneuve's BAR and may have to sit it out until the pit stops. Barrichello gets a reminder of his narrow lead. Hakkinen runs wide as he struggles with understeer on the McLaren. Verstappen's arrow suffers electronic failure, making him the first car to retire. As Frensen comes in for a scheduled pit stop, he hands second place to David Coulthard, who is still out on the track. Exiting his own pit stop, Button also loses a place to his teammate. De La Rosa is also out with similar problems to Verstappen. The Arrows team can pack up early. Along the hangar straight, Coulthard closes in on Barrichello. He makes a lovely pass round the outside into Stowe. Hakkinen comes in on lap 31, his one and only stop of the race. Overseen by Ron Dennis, the crew makes small adjustments to the McLaren in an attempt to improve the handling. Now running second, the engine telemetry shows an irregularity with Barrichello's Ferrari. On lap 33, Coulthard brings the McLaren into the pits. His 10-second stop hands the lead back to Barrichello. But two laps later, the Ferrari's engine momentarily cuts out mid-turn. As it kicks back into life, the car is put into a spin. Barrichello recovers, taking to the grass which is still waterlogged from the previous day's rain. His point scoring potential looks bleak. When he does make it back to the pits, hydraulic failure spells the end of the Brazilian's race. Ferrari teammate Michael Schumacher takes over the lead. With clear track ahead of him, he sets some of the fastest laps of the race. Further back, Zonta makes a mistake at Stowe Corner. On lap 38, Schumacher is the last one-stopper into the pits. Although the teams get him away in 8.8 .8 seconds, the German is passed in the pit lane, dropping him to sixth place. Eddie Jordan speaks with his driver Frensen, who now takes over the ever-changing lead. In close formation behind Coulthard, Ralf Schumacher, Button and Hakkinen. Frensen pits three laps later. Jordan's two-stop strategy denies him the lead. Schumacher's Ferrari heading towards Cops signifies Frensen is rejoining in sixth. The two Williams drivers running second and third have yet to make their final stops, which will advance Frensen through the field. 
Unfortunately, the German slows just six laps from the end. His Jordan stuck in sixth gear. Frensen cruises to retirement. Disappointment too for Jacques Villeneuve, whose car is halted by transmission failure. Mika Hakkinen keeps the pressure on Coulthard to the finish. But the Scot is first to cross the line. It's a proud moment for David. Victory is always sweeter on home ground. So it's great for the team. We've got both cars. First and second, obviously I'm very happy for myself to, to win this race, to win it a second time. And, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the season. Aptly, the British Grand Prix gives Coulthard his first win this year. Another Brit in the points, Jensen Button, puts in a good performance. The British Grand Prix was the victim of the most appalling spring weather. The torrential rain caused havoc for the drivers. With car parks and the circuit saturated, it was the fans who really suffered. I feel terribly sorry for the public. I mean, it's, for us, we're professionals, the promoter, that's the risk they take. But the public, they, you know, they shouldn't be subjected to this. I feel desperately sorry for, for everybody. It's, it's, it's a horrible, horrible piece of British weather. Barcelona is the city, circuit to Catalonia, the venue. Spain gets a taste of Formula One. Jordan driver Heinz Harald Frensen is on track within 10 minutes of qualifying opening. His new lap time becomes the standard to beat. Williams technical director Patrick Head observes Ralph Schumacher's time through the sectors. He clocks up the fastest lap so far. Coulthard's McLaren is experiencing a fuel pressure problem. The Scott has to run with more fuel than normal. Fourth becomes his highest position. Nearly 20 minutes into the hour, Barrichello takes the advantage to Ferrari. Hakkinen may be lacking rear grip, but he also squeezes a pole time out of the McLaren. Michael Schumacher times his flying lap to perfection. Temporary cloud coverage has dropped the surface temperature by 5 degrees Celsius, giving Schumacher a distinct advantage. In sharp contrast to the qualifying calamity at Silverstone, the German takes his first pole position of the season. The race foundations have been laid. <laughs> Sunday's conditions are warm and sunny, perfect for Formula One racing. A huge crowd prepares to watch 65 gruelling laps of Catalonia. The technical nature of the track will make it a tough race for the drivers. Warm-ups complete and the lights are out. Schumacher applies a tried and tested tactic, veering into his rival's path. Hakkinen tries to outdrag the German into turn one. The Ferrari star stays in front. His brother moves into third from fifth on the grid. The former world champion leads from Hakkinen, Ralph Schumacher, Coulthard and Barrichello. Jean Alesi is struggling with a lack of rear end grip, but it makes little difference as Pedro de la Rosa punts him off. Yet another retirement for Alain Prost's team. Michael Schumacher built up a comfortable lead over Hakkinen and inspired Ralph Schumacher is rooted to third. What's more, the Williams driver seems to have no problem keeping a determined Coulthard at bay.
engine failure puts pay to what could have been a very good weekend for Villeneuve. Another frustrating race for Honda and BAR. The Ferrari pit crew prepares for the leader's first stop on lap 24. Each man has his own well-rehearsed task. Chief mechanic Nigel Stepney is the refueler. Although not seriously injured, he's put out of action when Schumacher is waved off too early. Coulthard is in for his first pit stop from fourth position. The McLaren pit crew give the all clear, but the Scot is having trouble selecting first gear. It's a costly delay. He had been fighting with Williams and Ferrari. Ralf Schumacher retains third, but a quick stop by Barrichello could now leapfrog the Brazilian ahead of Coulthard. The English team's mechanics are quickly back in action as Hakkinen comes in from the lead. The Finn inherited first place when Schumacher made his stop. Unlike his teammate, the reigning world champion has no problems getting away. The pit lane speed restriction requires some restraint on the accelerator. Perhaps this contributes to Hakkinen losing track position to Schumacher. With more than half the race still to run, the Finn is not deterred. He sets about catching the Ferrari and piling on the pressure. Other interest comes from Rubens Barrichello and David Coulthard, who both want third place off Ralph Schumacher. Catalonia doesn't offer many overtaking opportunities. More pit stops may resolve the battle. Hakkinen reels in Schumacher, but that's just the easy bit out of the way, as the Finn knows only too well. Lap 41. Ralph Schumacher and Barrichello complete their second stops. Having pitted one lap earlier, Coulthard is to benefit. He moves up into third place. Meanwhile, Schumacher and Hakkinen are heading towards their pit crews. Minus Nigel Stepney, Ferrari are under pressure. The substitute fuel man has trouble engaging his nozzle. McLaren mechanics perform an average stop. Mika takes the lead with ease. The significance of Stepney's absence is realized. Schumacher's race has been turned around. The German has got a lot of traffic in front of him and a fired up David Coulthard behind. Catching a toe off the championship leader, Coulthard goes around the outside, taking the Ferrari number one for second place. A great piece of driving by the Scot. Ferrari eyes focus on Barrichello as he battles Ralf Schumacher for fourth. The Brazilian is struggling to get close enough to the German to attempt a passing maneuver. The Williams mechanics look on nervously as Ralf Schumacher catches up with his brother. The Ferrari driver has a slow puncture in his left rear tire. Michael Schumacher makes life very difficult for his sibling, allowing Barrichello to close right up. He seizes the moment and moves into third position. Fantastic teamwork from the Ferrari drivers. There's more misfortune for Williams as Jensen Button retires from sixth. BMW engine failure takes care of the Brit just four laps from the end. Mika Hakkinen rounds the final corner of the Spanish Grand Prix. The Finn takes the checkered flag to the satisfaction of his colleagues. I don't know how I could explain it, how pleased I am. I'm just uh, over the moon, or how you say it. <laughs> McLaren drivers swap places on the podium, repeating Silverstone's 1-2 finish. Mika Hakkinen clocks up his first victory of the season. 
Hakkinen's win in Spain moves him up to second in the Drivers' Championship table. He's still 14 points behind the leader, Michael Schumacher. David Coulthard survived a terrifying plane crash days before the Spanish race, but insisted it wouldn't affect his work. Well, as soon as I, I knew physically I was, I was fine to drive the car, um, psychologically I have absolutely no problem with uh, driving at this, this circuit and this race so soon after the accident. The Scot was reluctant to speak extensively about the crash in which two pilots lost their lives. McLaren bosses praised Coulthard's decision to race, saying his resolve was remarkable. Coulthard later admitted that taking to the track had worsened his injuries, three cracked ribs and torn muscles. But he fought on aggressively, finishing second to teammate Mika Hakkinen. I felt I was pretty focused before, but I feel a renewed focus and a renewed determination to get as much out of every day as possible. A lot of people ask how race drivers can do things like driving after a plane crash or a car accident. Must a race driver be mentally something very special? Well, they have no brain, so it's very simple. The qualifying session for the European Grand Prix is about to begin and changeable weather conditions look likely. Michael Schumacher is the German fans' favorite, but it's Mika Hakkinen taking to the track. The Finn is unhappy with the McLaren setup and works hard for a good lap. Technical director Adrian Newey is also concerned. David Coulthard, on the other hand, is pleased with the balance of his car and it shows as he moves into a potential pole position. Michael Schumacher, the early pole sitter, makes a mistake at the Dunlop curve. This doesn't improve his chances of stealing back the top slot. Showers now look imminent. John Alacy gets out of shape, leaving the Prost crew with some repair work later. Rain disrupts the last 30 minutes of the session and no more quick times are placed. David Coulthard takes his first pole position for nearly two years. Grey clouds still hang ominously above the Nürburgring at the start of race day. But stormy weather doesn't deter the crowd. Even the German premier shows up. David Coulthard can expect a tough start with Schumacher alongside him on the grid. The cars wait for the lights. Hakkinen makes a blistering start. Fisichella bumps truly. The rest of the field pass him like he's stationary. Hakkinen and Coulthard have literally swapped places, with Schumacher still second. Trulli's crippled Jordan retires, its suspension wrecked. The first ten cars run virtually nose to tail. Hakkinen tries to put some distance between himself and Schumacher. Lap 3 sees engine failure for Frentzen, the conclusion of a miserable weekend for Heinz. Both cars out spells disappointment for team boss Eddie Jordan. There's slight drizzle, but out in front it's still Hakkinen and Schumacher, pulling away from the rest of the field, although the track is visibly more slippery. It doesn't concern Schumacher. He excels in changeable weather and attacks into the chicane. A bold move which pays off on lap 11. The Ferraris run in sync as Barrichello makes a move of his own. This time to pass David Coulthard in the McLaren. Minardi's Mark Janet has problems resulting from an earlier spin. Diniz in the Sauber demonstrates the deteriorating track conditions. Activity in the Ferrari garage. There's a two-team battle brewing as Michael and Mika pit together on lap 15. For a brief moment, the race is out of their hands. It's Schumacher away from his marks first, rejoining the track and retaining the lead. He exits the pit lane just in front of David Coulthard. Yeah. 
The Finn now has his teammate ahead, but wastes no time rectifying the situation. Hakkinen lies second, back in pursuit of a scarlet Ferrari. Jos Verstappen and Eddie Irvine fight it out for sixth place. The Jaguar driver not willing to concede a championship point. Irvine's gritty determination doesn't reward and claims Ralph Schumacher's Williams in the process. Irvine continues, but not for long. It marks Eddie's third retirement in six races. Jaguar's disappointing season doesn't improve. Another casualty of the collision, Verstappen's Arrows has suspension problems, slamming him into the tires. Barrichello is now charging. A three-stop strategy was employed to compensate for his late switch to wets. Fisichella yields fourth place to the Brazilian. Schumacher in for his second pit stop. Hakkinen inherits the lead with 32 laps remaining. The Finn needs to secure about a 30 second advantage before his own stop if he is to get out ahead of the Ferrari. The crew may be ready but back markers have slowed Hakkinen's charge. He's only got 18 seconds over Schumacher when he pits on lap 45. It isn't enough. The German passes the pit lane exit. Mika has it all to do. Valve problems spell the end for Villeneuve. On track, Williams and Jaguar scrap for seventh. Caught out in the poor visibility, young Jensen Button runs up the back of Herbert. His crew waits to replace the damaged nose, but with water in the electrics, the Williams has shut down. Wurtz attempts an optimistic move on Herbert. Johnny's bad luck continues, just six laps from the end. Michael Schumacher takes the final turn in the European Grand Prix, a race he controlled with ease. Mika Hakkinen is the only other driver to finish on the same lap. I was dreaming for it. <laughs> Sometimes dreams come true, and uh, obviously now we are in, in, a, in a very good situation. We have a strong car, we have a good team, and we have uh, some points in advance. Yeah. This race brings Schumacher's winning tally to four. Pedro de la Rosa scores Arrow's first championship point of the season. Cross driver Nick Heidfeld achieved his best ever grid position. Although only 13th, he outqualified teammate Alacy. But it had all been in vain. The car weighed in two kilograms underweight. In this case, we have some new parts here this week, and uh, they got the calculation wrong. The unfortunate Heidfeld was disqualified from the race. Jaguar driver Johnny Herbert made his 150th Grand Prix start, 11 years after his first season with Benetton. It feels like years, I have to say. It feels a long time, but it's, it's, it's good, that I've, I suppose, that I've been able to do that many Grand Prix. Life with his current team isn't always easy. The cars have experienced difficulties in their first season. Sometimes Johnny's even had to push. The wealth and glamour of Formula One is never more evident than at Monaco. In front of the world's media, the sports stars prepare for qualifying. David Coulthard, a podium finisher in the last four races, was the fastest in practice. The Jordan team, opting for extra soft tyres, surprise everyone with their speed. Challenging Trulli's time, Coulthard runs tenths of a second quicker to take provisional pole. Moments later, Michael Schumacher is on the track. Fortunate to avoid slower traffic, he goes quicker still. 
Jano truly provides unexpected competition. The Italian sets the fastest lap on his third run. Now displaced, Schumacher is forced to work hard. Another clear lap sees him topple truly from the top spot, which is vital to a place like Monaco. Here at last is the jewel in F1's crown, the Grand Prix which most drivers aspire to win. Boris Becker offers tips on tennis before the McLaren duo prepare to race. Jano Trulli appears quite bewildered by his place on the front row alongside Michael Schumacher. As the race gets underway, the top five drivers maintain their grid positions. Frentzen separates Coulthard in third from Hakkinen in fifth. Into old station hairpin, Jensen Button meets the arrows of De La Rosa. Despite the number of cars involved, only Button and De La Rosa have damage. The race is stopped on the opening lap and there's work to be done before the restart. OK, we'll put tyres on that we can start the race from the end of the pit lane, Dickie. Stranded drivers race back to the pits and line up on the grid once more. Schumacher has another perfect start. Ferrari leads. Truly, Coulthard, Frinson, Hakkinen, Ralph Schumacher and Alesi. Hakkinen looks at passing Frinson, knowing he has places to make up. McLaren are in a unique situation with both cars stuck behind Jordans. Schumacher has it easy out in front, soon easing away from the rest of the field. To the Germans' advantage, Jarno Trulli successfully defends second place. David Coulthard finding it impossible to pass. Frinsen heads the next group, causing similar problems for Hakkinen. Schumacher, increasing his lead by around a second a lap, demonstrates his dominance on the narrow street circuit. Lap 35, Hakkinen begins to slow. Ralph Schumacher gains a place while the stricken McLaren cruises to the pits. It's an unscheduled stop, but Mika clearly has trouble. A problem with the brake pedal is the cause. Once remedied, Hakkinen rejoins the race, albeit further down the field. Attempting to avoid Hakkinen as he exits the pits, Ralph Schumacher rams the barrier at Sandevot. Throwing immediate doubt on his presence in Canada, he hobbles away having sustained a deep cut to his left leg. Jano Trulli has driven well to keep David Coulthard at bay. Sadly, gearbox failure destroys the Italian's chances of a podium finish. Bitter disappointment for Jordan. Schumacher has now pulled out a considerable lead, but without the Jordan in his path, David Coulthard begins setting new fastest laps. The McLaren isn't the only worry. Schumacher's car looks damaged. As something gives way, the German is forced to slow, limping towards the pits on lap 55. Unfortunately, the car is doomed. The suspension broken through overheating caused by a cracked exhaust. While David Coulthard takes over the lead, Hakkinen moves nearer to the point. Like others before him, Frensen becomes a victim of Sandevot. Driver error is to blame. Heinz throws away second place. It's a disastrous finish for the Jordan team, who had so much potential going into the race. Barrichello benefits from Frensen's retirement, with Fisichella close behind in third. Some 20 seconds ahead, David Coulthard negotiates the final stages of the Twisty Street Circuit. Winning at Monaco is a prestigious moment, and the Scot is a popular victor.
I've benefited today from uh, from problems with uh, with Michael and with uh, Jarno, but uh, that's Monaco, and I've had my I think my fair share of bad luck over the years, so I'm quite happy to take this win today. Until now, David had only finished in the points at Monaco once before. Hakkinen scraped one point at the end thanks to Frensen's retirement. With this win, Coulthard moves above his teammate in the championship table, 12 points behind leader Michael Schumacher. McLaren are closing in on Ferrari for the Constructors' title. The gap narrows to just five points. Alongside the St. Lawrence River, Canada's Grand Prix circuit holds the season's eighth qualifying round. Schumacher and Hakkinen's desire for pole position is probably equaled by Jacques Villeneuve, who's on home ground. But the Ferrari's straight-line speed will be hard to match. Hakkinen has the potential. A faulty shock absorber doesn't hamper his early run. Then Coulthard emerges as the man to beat him. Villeneuve is resolute and manages sixth position. McLaren lose out to Schumacher as pole is exchanged again. On his last flying lap, Coulthard goes quickest by nine thousandths of a second. But McLaren barely have time to celebrate. Schumacher snatches pole position in the final moments. Well done, Michael. That was great. Fantastic effort. The race takes place at the Gilles Villeneuve circuit, named after Canada's racing hero. Ralph Schumacher has passed medical examinations on his leg and is fit enough to race. Seconds before the formation lap, David Coulthard stalls his McLaren. Mechanics fire up the Mercedes engine, but in contrast to the rules, they are still on the grid. Uneasy glances fill the McLaren garage as they ponder the consequences. David falls into place alongside Michael and concentrates on the race. Using his uncompromising tactic, Schumacher slices across Coulthard's path and into the lead. Jacques Villeneuve makes an astonishing start, moving from sixth to third. As the race gets underway, Eddie Irvine is left standing with a clutch problem. The position settled down, leaving Hakkinen a disappointing fifth. Handling the arrows with confidence, Pedro de la Rosa moves into sixth. A lap and a half down, Irvine joins the race. Villeneuve slips back three seconds from the leaders, holding up faster cars like Barrichello and Hakkinen. Coulthard loses second place. McLaren's starting grid drama incurs a 10-second stop-go penalty. After his setback, his race prospects look bleak. David finds himself down in 10th. His main threat removed, Schumacher is in a race of his own. Lap 25, Barrichello finally passes Villeneuve for second at the hairpin. He begins pulling away with incredible pace. Around this time, the circuit gets a sprinkling of rain. Frenson pits with concern over his brakes. Leave the rear tires off, we need to look at the disc. Leave the rear tires off, we need to look at the disc. He's forced into retirement on lap 32. Villeneuve fights to keep track position, but faces tough competition from Hakkinen. Once the McLaren gets ahead at turn one, it immediately sets the new fastest lap. After making his first pit stop, Schumacher sees Hakkinen in his mirrors, but the Finn has yet to stop himself. Still clinging to fourth place, Villeneuve pits. He takes on new slicks just as the rain gets heavier. 
The track becomes more slippery as Schumacher pits on lap 45. He takes on wet tyres. Directly behind, Barrichello queues for a set of wets after failing to swap during his first pit stop. McLaren experienced the same problem. Both their drivers are on slicks. Barrichello will pay for the extra stop. Had he remained on the track, his Ferrari would have been leading. He rejoins the race half a second behind Schumacher. In from fourth place, Hakkinen also gets tyres to suit the bad weather. As conditions worsen, drivers struggle to stay on the track, Schumacher being one of them. The excursion through the gravel does no harm to his lead. Lap 64, Villeneuve takes out Ralf Schumacher on the hairpin. A promising start for BAR ends in one swift move. Jacques apologises for the incident, which concludes a poor race for Williams BMW. Coulthard in eighth attacks Alex Wurtz, who sustains damage to his front wing, but continues. During the last few laps, Barrichello carves into Schumacher's lead. The German is nursing a suspected rear brake problem, but team orders prevent the Brazilian challenging the Ferrari number one. With barely a tenth of a second between them, it's a rewarding finish for team principal Jean Tot. Fisichella secures a superb third, while Mika Hakkinen settles for fourth. The team obviously asked him to to slow down and not try to, to, to push too much because I, I couldn't push uh, anymore. And thanks to Rooms, he did. He played well, very well and uh, we both finished safely uh, the race first and two. Second place is becoming familiar to Rubens Barrichello. Briatore pumps up Benetton, giving Fisichella another podium finish. Michael Schumacher has a comfortable 22-point lead in the championship. From position four downwards, there is no change from the last race. Qualifying is about to commence in Manicourt, France. Barrichello's Ferrari takes to the track and laps three seconds quicker than the early pace setters. Local favourite Jean Alesi drives his Prost to the limit, setting a good opening time. Erja Hakkinen looks on as husband Mika makes a bid for pole, but he's unable to beat Barrichello's time. David Coulthard's McLaren has endless problems. Michael Schumacher on his first run out just completes the fastest lap before yellow flags are issued. Coulthard sets a time in Hakkinen's spare car, but comes back for his own now repaired McLaren. With the clock ticking, David feels the pressure. In the closing stages of the session, three men aim to beat Schumacher. Coulthard claims second fastest. Barrichello takes third on the grid. Hakkinen cannot improve his time and sits a surprising fourth. Michael Schumacher adds pole position number 27 to his career file. Magnicor is set to embrace the season's ninth race. 
Michael Schumacher can feel confident about his place on the grid, but the McLaren pair are both hungry for maximum points. With just minutes to go, it's time to shut out the noise and find deep concentration. Cars away from the grid. Schumacher slices across the front of David Coulthard. He eases off the gas, which allows Barrichello through. The rest of the pack fall into position behind. Ferrari's first and second, McLaren third and fourth. Jacques Villeneuve moves from seventh to fifth and Frenson up to sixth. Prost driver Nick Heidfeld puts teammate Jean Alesi into a spin on the Adelaide hairpin. Alesi recovers, four places down. Coulthard lines up to attack Barrichello. Eventually getting the power down, he slides through in hot pursuit of the other Ferrari. Lap 24 and the race leader is into the pits. Coulthard, yet to make his first stop, takes control at the front. One lap later, McLaren and Ferrari have Rubens and David in together. McLaren are quick, but Coulthard does not have time to exit the pit lane before Schumacher passes. The Scotsman reclaims second with Michael in his sights. Barrichello loses out behind, rejoining fourth behind Hackerden. Coulthard strikes into Adelaide hairpin, but Schumacher refuses to move, forcing him wide. David sees red, expressing his feelings in no uncertain terms. Jean Alesi, under attack from Wurtz, is also on a short fuse, but the failed move is at Benetton's cost. With 33 laps remaining, Ferrari still maintain the lead. Both McLarens are now breathing down Schumacher's neck. Driver and pit wall communication halts while Coulthard concentrates on his next move. He dives down the inside as Schumacher turns in. There's barely a hair's breadth between them. Their tires brush, but David is through. Hakkinen also takes a look, but doesn't gamble with his points. Lap 43, the pit crew's battle resumes. Michael and Mika in together. More than just a pit stop, this is the fight for second place. Schumacher comes off better. Mika snapping at his heels. David Coulthard motors on, waiting for his own second stop. The McLaren team worked to perfection. Schumacher pushes hard to steal back the lead. But Coulthard exits the pit lane in good time. After four laps in the Jordan's dirty air, Ralf Schumacher passes Jarno Trulli. The move puts him sixth, stressing the improvement of the Williams team. Hakkinen, threatening the Ferrari, receives an invitation to pass on lap 59, a rare opportunity which is seized on immediately. Moments later, shock in the Ferrari camp. The engine is blown on Michael Schumacher's car. Remembering David's problems in qualifying, the Scot is told to ease up. Neither McLaren nor Coulthard want to risk 10 championship points in the closing stages. Not all the actions at the front. Ralph Schumacher has reeled in Jacques Villeneuve in the BAR, but time is running out. As his crew wait to greet him, David Coulthard rounds off a superb drive to take victory for McLaren. Well, I have to apologise for my uh, hand gestures. That's not at all uh, in keeping with uh, the sport. But uh, as you can understand, probably my emotions are running high. I'd, I, I know to be in a battle, in a, in a position to battle for the championship, I needed to win here today, and that's what I'm trying to get done.
David Coulthard takes his third win, the highest number he has achieved in one season. BAR are in the points again, courtesy of Jacques Villeneuve. Jordan are pleased to have landed a works engine supply deal with Honda, suggesting the engine manufacturer's disappointment with BAR's performance this year. Obviously very happy for Eddie, um, a little bit disappointed for ourselves, but I don't think it's bad, I think it's probably good, and I think Honda will do an excellent job for the two teams. If I don't win a title with Honda, then I'm afraid it'll be a poor reflection on the team or myself in the future. In France, McLaren confirmed David Coulthard and Mika Hakkinen have been signed for 2001. First brought together in 1996, this marks a record-breaking driver partnership. I'm not nice, I want to win, and I've done it here today. Host to the Austrian Grand Prix since 1997, the A1 ring prepares for F1 qualifying. With rain threatening in the opening minutes, many drivers take to the track early. Rubens Barrichello puts in a good lap before the clouds break. Teammate Schumacher is surprisingly slower. Exceeding the limits of the BAR, Jacques Villeneuve ruins a fast lap. Schumacher comes in for work. David Coulthard takes advantage of an empty track. Schumacher must watch and wait as main rival Hakkinen also clocks up a fast time. McLaren look quietly confident. Back on the track and feeling the pressure, Michael Schumacher makes a mistake. Mika's position is safe. Michael tries again, but the slide costs valuable time. The Finn is triumphant. The serenity of the Styrian Mountains is about to be disrupted by the race. But there's always time for a bit of star spotting on the grid. Celebrities like Placido Domingo and Brian Adams mingle with the F1 drivers. Luciano Berti replaces Eddie Irvine, who has suspected appendicitis. It's a clean start for both McLarens, but Mika Hakkinen edges in front and down towards turn one. Schumacher suddenly spins in a cloud of tyre smoke. Catastrophe for Ferrari at the first corner. The safety car is brought out while the carnage is cleared. The replay shows Zonta's BAR clips the back of the Ferrari. In a separate incident behind, Deniz pushes Fisichella into the wall. Truly is simply blocked. Through all this, Mika Salo emerges third, De La Rosa fourth, with both McLarens up front. On lap three, the safety car leaves the track and racing resumes. Rubens Barrichello begins carving through the field. Despite having a broken rear diffuser from the first corner incident, just outside the points in seventh, Frensen spins out dramatically, sliding on his own oil after a blown pipe. Both Jordans are out after just four laps. On lap eight, Barrichello passes Mika Salo, who's now fourth. Mika Hakkinen extends his lead, pulling away from the rest of the field at around half a second a lap. Even teammate Coulthard, with a slightly heavier fuel load, struggles to keep up with the Finn. Ricardo Zonta and Pedro Deniz are issued with stop-go penalties for their part in the first corner clash. Each car is held for 10 seconds by their crew. Pit board instructions tell Mika to minimize the revs. There's no need to jeopardize the car while so far ahead. After running an impressive third, Pedro de la Rosa retires with gearbox failure. Hakkinen comes in for his one and only stop on lap 38. Meanwhile, David Coulthard takes over at the front, picking up the speed with a clear track ahead. 
Four laps later, it's time for the Scots own service. A flash of silver is Hakkinen's McLaren passing the pit lane. David fails to turn the positions around. Hakkinen may now be unstoppable. Dejected Ferrari put their hopes in Barrichello, now running as high as third. Frost teammates Heidfeld and Alesi execute the perfect crime, taking each other off. Much to Alain's distress, it's not their first collision this season. Barrichello's late pit stop on lap 46 gives the crew a chance to assess the damaged Ferrari. They find there's little they can do. Likewise, the Brazilian's teammate can do little about his diminishing lead in the points. Young English driver Jensen Button runs fifth on lap 53. He recovers the Williams after a short detour off track and holds on to his position. The Honda engine in Zonta's BAR gives up 12 laps from the finish. It ends a miserable race for Ricardo. A flawless drive from pole position to checkered flag. Mika Hakkinen turns into the last corner. Laying to rest rumours that he's lost his motivation, the Finn reminds everyone why he's the reigning world champion. Now, early on in, in the race, you received a shift rev sign from your pit. What was that? Basically, it, it, it means a, uh, it's no point to, to, to rev the engine in the maximum RPM. So you don't have to take everything out of the engine. Uh, in that point, personally, I was not sure exactly was there a problem or did they show me just it was no point to push. Uh, so, automatically, I did drop to RPM, double hundred reps. Austria sees Hakkinen take his second win of the season. Jensen Button equals his highest position for Williams BMW. The Jordan team were busy at the negotiating table before the start of the Austrian Grand Prix. Frentzen stays for next year. Benetton-bound technical director Mike Gascoigne has been released from his contract. Trying to find out what's best for Mike, of course what's best for Jordan, and to see if all of those things can happen together and I'll, I'll discuss over the weekend with Flavio what his interests are and then we'll go back, think about what the best interest for Jordan is and come up with a solution, I hope, very quickly. No, no, somebody hit me in the back and turned me around, be careful. Rain is the word on everyone's lips in Hockenheim. Light showers have already dampened the circuit. Every car aims to set a quick time in the opening minutes. David Coulthard shows dexterity in the slippery conditions, setting a lap time 1.4 seconds faster than anyone else. 20 minutes into the session, Fizzy Keller makes a superb effort in the Benetton. The rain continues to pour, soaking the track between the first and third chicanes. Coulthard's pole time is unchallenged until a break in the weather. Sharing the tea car with Schumacher, Barrichello has yet to qualify. The best he can offer on a wet track is 18. Michael makes one last bid to knock David off the top while the rain holds off. Although his time improves, the German only manages second and pole sitter Coulthard takes the limelight. Hockenheim's weather is about as unsettled as the myriad of German fans turned out to see Michael Schumacher at his home race. David Coulthard will be mindful of the start in France when Schumacher swerved in his path. At the off, he mimics the Germans' move. Mika Hakkinen fires past them both. Schumacher changes his line, blocking Fisichella. Both cars exit the race at the first corner. Hakkinen leads Coulthard and Trulli. From the back, Barrichello positively flies. 
Words are exchanged about the crash, but thankfully, no more. Utilising a car light on fuel, Barrichello tracks and attacks one car after another. Eager to advance before his first stop, he makes easy work of De La Rosa in the Arrows. Finally, Trulli is conquered, placing Barrichello third on lap 15. The leaders will be harder to catch. Hakkinen and Coulthard have a clear advantage. McLaren can barely believe their luck. Rubens makes a quick first stop at only 7.2 seconds. Suddenly, a spectator invades the track. There is no alternative but to deploy the safety car. Hakkinen immediately makes his pit stop. Ron Dennis considers the consequences for David Coulthard, who will now have to queue behind the safety car. On the next lap, he peels off into the pit lane. The fuel flap is open and the crew on standby. David selects first gear and moves off his marks. He clears the 80 km speed restriction and accelerates back onto the track. His mechanics have done all they can for now. The strange knock-on effect of a lone protester is that Coulthard drops from second to sixth. Ahead of him is his teammate, Truly, Barrichello, De La Rosa and Frenson. On lap 29, the safety car leaves the track and racing resumes. Hakkinen wastes no time putting distance between himself and the rest of the field. Crucial while every car is in such close relation. De La Rosa, Zonta and Verstappen all manage to lock up, but to no ill effect. Attention again turns to Barrichello. He benefited from making his second stop when the safety car came out. Ahead is truly in second, but he will have to pit once more. Nudged by Deniz, Alessi ploughs into the barrier. Team boss Alain Prost has another wreckage on his hands. Pedro will do well to steer clear of Jean, who is understandably unhappy. The safety car is brought out for the second time while the debris is cleared off the track. From the spectator's point of view, this can be incredibly dull, but the entertainment value may be rising. Eddie Jordan feels the first signs of rain. The race proper restarts on lap 32. As all cars proceed along the pit straight, Wurtz's Benetton skids off, coming to a rest before making contact with car or barrier. Localised showers then hit the stadium end of the circuit. As Hockenheim is plagued by rain again, everyone shows caution. Ron Dennis takes stock of the situation. Mika Hakkinen opts for wet tyres, as does Jano Trulli. Notably, Barrichello is one of the few to stay out. The pit lane is a sudden hive of activity. Hakkinen and Trulli, not wishing to gamble with the weather, lose their top positions. Barrichello is promoted to the front. Teammates Villeneuve and Zonta collide. But both recover and continue. Barrichello remains on slick tyres and consequently leads the race. As the track still has dry patches, the Brazilian's lap times vary little from Hakkinen on wet. Frensen is forced into retirement with electrical failure. It couldn't be more disappointing for the German who was in line for a podium finish.
In the final stages of the race, Barrichello is a comfortable 12 seconds ahead. Taking the chequered flag is an overwhelming new experience for the likeable Brazilian. I was just uh, thinking to myself, you know, that it has to be mine. I mean, yesterday was such a, a bad day and, and it can be good. So let's make it uh, as simple as possible. And I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe. I'm, I'm just, uh, I can't believe my eyes. After 123 starts, Rubens Barrichello takes his first ever Grand Prix victory. Michael Schumacher's last three race retirements have allowed Hakkinen and Coulthard to come within two points of his championship lead. After a traumatic season and a half with BAR, Jacques Villeneuve surprised many people by signing a new three-year contract with the team. A lot better to stay with people uh, you trust and that you, you know it's, it's going to work. Um, but as far as winning is concerned, I think uh, both teams could have been a viable option uh, and I'm positive that this team will do it. In the face of growing criticism from his rivals, Michael Schumacher defended his aggressive race start manoeuvres. Don't put it like this, it's only me who is doing it, which is completely untrue. If you look through the field, you see many doing it. Huh? Yeah. And it ha happened to the same guys who now complain to me. They have done it in the past as well. The Hungara ring circuit finds Schumacher and Ferrari under enormous pressure. The German has not scored a championship point since France. Pole position today is crucial. Mika Hakkinen looked to be struggling. The Finn is first out on the track and sets the pace. Arrows have greatly improved this season, but the slow corners will be a test for the orange cars. Pedro de la Rosa's concern about a lack of grip doesn't come to fruition. He takes a commendable third. Perhaps even more impressive, Jensen Button puts his Williams second on the grid. Ralph Schumacher gets the most out of a new and more powerful BMW engine. He takes provisional pole. Minutes later, Coulthard shows the morning speed hasn't deserted him. Schumacher studies teammate Barrichello, calmly assessing the Ferrari's handling. Finally, 30 minutes into qualifying, Michael Schumacher rolls out of the garage. Overnight work on the car appears to have paid off. The German is in a class of his own. He takes pole with ease. Mika Hakkinen is first to challenge, but he's unhappy with the balance of his McLaren. David Coulthard is closer, but still a fraction off pole time. Schumacher has no need for a final run. He heads tomorrow's grid. We felt confident coming here, and I hope we can be confident going away from here tomorrow. I think it's a matter of setup. You either be fast out the straight or you be fast in the stadium, one or the other. Mika Hakkinen is not short of support in Hungary, where the start is all important, but he'll find it tough from third on the grid. 
drivers complete the warm-up lap and retake their positions for the start. Five lights go out and the race begins. Schumacher hesitates. Hakkinen grabs the opportunity and dives down the inside. Ferrari have already lost the lead. Coulthard wins third in a scrap with Ralf Schumacher, but otherwise the first corner is taken without incident. Villeneuve passes De La Rosa for 20th place. Both are trailing after a previous collision resulted in a pit stop. Alessi's race is over when a suspension problem caused him to clip the pit lane wall. Fisichella is also in trouble with suspected brake problems. Lap 27, Michael Schumacher is the first front runner to pit. The first of two stops will temporarily knock him down from second place. He exits the pit lane in fourth behind teammate Barrichello. Rubens allows the German to pass and Schumacher accelerates away. At the second round of pit stops, Coulthard aims to jump ahead of Schumacher. As he sprints to the end of the pit lane, Michael just beats him to it. The lack of overtaking opportunities means McLaren must really put the pressure on. Exiting the pits on lap 55, Button is eager to slot back into 7th place, a position he's held for the last 23 laps. Unfortunately, the engine dies in the Williams BMW. Both Truly and Irvine pass him. Standing head and shoulders above the rest of the field, Hakkinen steadies the pace in the last few laps. An efficient car and a master move at the first corner has effectively won him the race. A first-class victory for Mika Hakkinen. Uh, thank you, guys. Good on six important points. After race 12 of 1999, Hakkinen had four wins under his belt. This year, Hungary marks his third. For the first time this season, a new name heads the driver's table. Hakkinen moves two points above Schumacher. McLaren reclaim the lead in the Constructors' Championship. Jordan and BAR battle for fifth. BAR signs Panis for 2001. The best thing about Olivia's ex experience, I mean, he's 34 years old. He's been with Prost for many years, where he did very well. But especially what he's been doing with McLaren this year has been fantastic. And I think he's just matured brilliantly with uh, the McLaren team. I'm very happy to come back for the next year for the race. And the choice with BAR, I think, is very good choice. I'm very pleased to work with Jack Villeneuve next year and the BAR team. I'm very happy. Giancarlo Fisichella is staying with Benetton for next season. It will be the young driver's fourth year with the Italian team. Mika, we know that you spent uh, some time uh, in holiday in Italy in the past. Uh, is it a, a possibility to see you in the future more often in Italy, maybe in Maranello? <laughs> <laughs> Belgium becomes the 13th destination in the Formula One season. Many teams make major changes to the cars here to minimize the burden this circuit puts on their aerodynamics. The McLarens are well suited to the Spa circuit.
Mika Hakkinen combined speed and smoothness to set pole time. The Jordan team also expect good results here. But even they are surprised when Jano Trulli takes provisional pole. Frinson's chances are blown at the bus stop, hindered by David Coulthard. Barrichello is caught out at the same spot. Causing the biggest stir of the afternoon, Jensen Button beats off stiff competition. He qualifies his Williams third. Jean Alesi spins the Prost at the bus stop, causing Schumacher to slow on his quickest lap of the session. Hakkinen's new pole time is left unrivaled. Fisichella's Sunday's warm-up was more of a demolition derby. Practice days at Spa had ideal weather conditions. Now, as Sunday's race is due to start, mist and rain prevail over the circuit. McLaren took pole position by nearly a second over anyone else, but the unfamiliar faces of Jarno Trulli and Jensen Button surround them at the front of the grid. Usual tension building is abated by news that the start will take place under the safety car. This is seemingly at the driver's request due to the wet track conditions. Drivers weave back and forth trying to get warmth into the tires. After one full lap, the safety car is brought in. Hakkinen begins to take advantage of his pole position and edges away from the Jordan. A tricky turn from a standing start, La Source is negotiated without incident. Drivers show caution in the fine spray, their visibility greatly reduced. Positions at the front remain the same after the sweeping curve of Eau Rouge. At the beginning of lap two, Michael Schumacher, who began fourth, begins putting the pressure on Jensen Button. David Coulthard tags on the back of the Ferrari, looking for his own overtaking opportunity. Before long, Schumacher is past the Williams. And at the next turn, Ferrari power eases him into second. Button tries to capitalize on the move, but is lucky to continue as he shunts the Jordan out of the race. Most cars, including Schumacher, are into the pits for dry tires at the end of lap six. Hakkinen is the first McLaren in. Coulthard must wait another lap. Buttons Williams also makes it to the pits. The McLarens are briefly first and second, with Schumacher closing in. Both he and Hakkinen are running dry tires on a slightly damp track, and it's the Ferrari that's faster. McLaren are finally ready to give Coulthard a set of slicks but staying out that extra lap drops the Scott to ninth. Hakkinen's lead looks secure until Stavlot. As the Finn recovers, Schumacher passes. The Ferrari pulls away at immense speed. The race could be decided, but Hakkinen's determination is not waning and he puts in a charge of his own. Rubens Barrichello rolls to a halt in the pit lane entry road and mechanics rush to retrieve him. Fuel pressure problems signal his retirement. Hakkinen eats into Schumacher's lead with each passing lap. The Finn now stands a real chance of catching the Ferrari. With just 17 laps remaining, the two teams are in for a nail-biting finish. Hakkinen's attack on Schumacher comes at 190 miles per hour. They almost touch as Schumacher shuts the door. Further back, Coulthard gets a run on Jensen Button. 
The Williams driver has raced well, but losing fourth means settling for two championship points. The leading pair approach Zonta as they near Lekoum. This is Mika's moment. As Schumacher veers left, Hakkinen veers right, passing them both. It's an outstanding move and the whole McLaren camp are elated. Isolated from the action up ahead, Ralf Schumacher runs third. Hakkinen leads the place buzzing after his overtaking manoeuvre. He takes it steady in the last three laps, but is soon waved to victory by the chequered flag. Ron Dennis is overwhelmed. Mika's sensational move will surely go down in history. I knew, knew that way following Michael, you know, it's, it's no point to try to follow him and then try to overtake him and the straight because obviously he's not going to give me a room. It's correct. Yeah. So I took plan B and overtook the back marker and at the same time overtook to Michael. And it was great, great over, overtaking when you were and I loved it. I'm not sure if the Michael did. Mika Hakkinen's win moves him six points clear of Michael Schumacher. David Coulthard is still in contention in third. After a difficult debut season with French team Prost, it was confirmed that Nick Heidfeld has signed a three-year contract with the Sauber team. Sauber are to lose current driver Mika Salo, who signed a fledgling Formula One team Toyota. The Finn said he wanted the chance to win. I've been racing for seven years in Formula One and always for same positions, five, six and seven. So I'm fed up with it. And Benetton get button. I think it's a good opportunity with Benetton. Um, also Flavio now, the uh, ringleader. Yes. <laughs> and uh, also Rene coming back in. I think it's yeah. a great opportunity the next two years. Jens now has to come back in, a, in two years' time for a further two years. I'm, I expect we'll be looking forward to that very much. At Monza, attention immediately focuses on the new tight right-hander that is turn one. It should make the race start interesting, but some drivers have other things on their mind. Qualifying is about to begin and the track is opened. Barrichello is sporting a rear wing slightly different from Schumacher's car. He runs fractionally quicker than his teammate. Hakkinen's best lap is still marginally shy of pole. The Finn complains of understeer. Matching Barrichello's wing setup, Schumacher tries to better his time. And succeeds! McLaren are still problem solving. But Hakkinen's next flying lap shows they still haven't found the remedy. So far, we haven't had very often this, this occasion and, and uh, obviously we're very glad that we're back on the, on the road. Italians worship Ferrari and luckily the team look on form for the race. McLaren meanwhile are not entirely happy with their setup. A scarlet wall faces Hakkinen. Schumacher dares him to have a go. At the start, most eyes are on Ferrari, but at the back, a Lacey has stalled. Hakkinen takes second off Barrichello as they all head towards the first corner. Some don't make it that far. Deniz is pushed into Irvine by teammate Salo. Irvine's Jaguar retires and the two Saubers are damaged. 
Schumacher stretches his lead oblivious. The race order begins to take shape. However, lap one is destined for Monza mayhem. Triggered by Frenson, four cars are involved in the smash. Seconds later, De La Rosa somersaults into the chaos. A wasted opportunity for Trulli, whose temper rises as high as the dust. Surprisingly, the race is not red flagged, but it proceeds under caution. Coulthard and Trulli argue over who's going to sit in the front. The Scot is resigned to a quiet race. Barrichello just broods. Finally, the lights go out on the safety car. Immediately ahead of the restart, Button is caught out by Schumacher's pacing tactics and sudden braking. The Williams BMW receives damage after its scrape with the guardrail and doesn't turn into Parabolica. On lap 11, the safety car disappears and Michael Schumacher heads the field of 14. Now, a rare blend of teams. Sadly, Jacques Villeneuve loses a potential podium finish. The BAR suffers electrical problems, causing the Canadian to retire from third. His teammate Ricardo Zonta provides the action on lap 21. Light on fuel, the BAR passes Verstappen and the Brazilian moves into third. He pits two laps later for the first of two stops. By mid-race, the gap between Schumacher and Hakkinen has visibly grown. McLaren expected less tyre wear than Ferrari, which would have given an advantage. As it is, Hakkinen's running up to a second a lap slower than Schumacher. On lap 39, Michael is in for new tyres and fuel that will see him to the end of the race. The Ferrari's pit stop briefly hands the lead to McLaren, but after running three laps longer than Schumacher, Hakkinen also makes his one single stop. Second in the championship table, but first in the race, Schumacher looks unstoppable. Hakkinen can't mirror the Ferrari's performance, although he does break down the gap. The Tafosi dream is moments away from becoming reality as Schumacher completes the 53rd and final lap. He crosses the line first for the sixth time this season. Yeah, fantastic drive, Michael. Perfect. Fantastic drive. Well done. I'm just happy. I'm just exhausted and... Yeah. I'm not sure if you're aware, but this is your 41st victory, which puts you equal second all time with Ayrton Senna. Do those records mean a lot to you? Yes, it does mean a lot to me. Sorry. David Coulthard is now out of the championship race after failing to score in Monza. Schumacher revives his own title chances, moving within two points of Mika Hakkinen. The devastating accident at Monza's second chicane claimed the life of Fire Marshal Paolo Ghislimberti. Despite receiving immediate medical attention, the Marshal died of injuries which he sustained when he was struck by debris. The only way really to feel uh, sorry about everything there is to attend at the funeral and uh, be there, give the relative uh, the support. For the first time in nine years, the US plays host to Formula One. Rich in motorsport heritage, what better place to bring a Grand Prix than Indianapolis? The Ferrari pair use the circuit's long straight to their advantage in qualifying. 
Schumacher manoeuvres into Barrichello's slipstream to get a tow. With his teammates' help, he improves on his own pole position time. Hakkinen makes his final attempt to get ahead. The Finn knocks Barrichello from the front row but fails to take pole by two tenths of a second. David Coulthard still has a run left. The McLarens take a tip off Ferrari, causing anxiety in the garage. The Scott takes the second fastest time. The Indianapolis grid is resolved. Schumacher in pole. Indianapolis Speedway smacks an all-American stamp on Formula One. Headed by Schumacher, the grid is complete. All drivers try to anticipate the lights. They don't always get it right. David Coulthard undoubtedly jumped the start. Surely a matter for the stewards. In the meantime, he leads. Schumacher is second, then Hakkinen and Barrichello. Trulli lies fifth, then Button sixth. The young Englishman takes a run at Trulli early on. It's not the first time they've collided this season, and they both receive punctures. Jordan driver Trulli comes to a stop soon after the incident. Barrichello pits as the drying track calls for slick tyres. Many other drivers will follow suit. Race leader Coulthard tries to give Hakkinen an advantage by holding up Schumacher. But the German is not playing the game. Coulthard doesn't make it easy. But the Ferrari goes through and into the lead. Still on the same lap, Hakkinen pits, taking on a set of dry tyres in the process. He rejoins fifth behind Mazzacane's Minardi. Predictably, David Coulthard incurs a 10-second stop-go penalty. He must stop again next lap to change tyres, which will drop him out of the running. Schumacher continues to extend his lead, but has stayed out on wets longer than most others. He slots his pit stop into lap 16, while Hakkinen, now up into second, takes advantage of some clear track. He gains more time with every sector. The middle of the race could be brewing some exciting action as Schumacher heads off to defend his position. However, engine failure spoils all the fun. A severe blow to Hakkinen. Now Schumacher only need finish fifth to overtake the Finn in the championship points table. An alternative battle develops later in the race. But Villeneuve hands his third place over to Barrichello. <laughs> The BAR recovers and fights on. Rubens moves up into second after Frentzen pits and maintains the position through his own stop on lap 53. After running as high as second, Ralf Schumacher retires with a leak in the Williams pneumatic system. Villeneuve makes a comeback. Frensen has something he wants, but third eludes him again. Get back to him pretty quickly, come on. No challenge equals lack of concentration. Thousands simultaneously draw breath as Schumacher spins just four laps shy of the flag. The Ferrari lives on, acknowledging the wake-up call. Schumacher, who now looks like the gambling man's favorite for the championship title, is waved to a win by Tony George. 
it's the first time we've been here and I guess nobody of us expected to have such a great welcome from the American fans, although it's probably not only American because they came here from all over the world. But uh, seeing so many people here celebrating with us this victory, 1-2 for Ferrari, uh, it's, yeah, the best. Schumacher surpasses Ayrton Senna's record number of wins. Senna coincidentally won the last US Grand Prix in 91. One more victory stands between Schumacher and the championship title. Eight points behind, Hakkinen is now his only rival. The 20 points at stake are not enough for Coulthard. Champ Car star Juan Pablo Montoya is set to join the Williams Formula One team next year. Well, clearly we think that he's a very talented driver and I don't think he has done anything but learn and improve by racing over here for two seasons. After a troubled season, Prost are to part company with Peugeot, favouring a supply of customer Ferrari engines. It's the best new of the, of the year and uh, we made an agreement with uh, Ferrari for the next two years. For Schumacher and Hakkinen, pole position at Suzuka will be the most important one they fight this season. Schumacher has already set Hakkinen a target. The Finns lap is quicker, giving him provisional pole for the first time this session. Under pressure, the German makes another run. Pushing the Ferrari a little harder, using a bit more curb here and there, he lowers the lap time again. As the hour passes, Hakkinen has one last chance to recover the top spot. Through the first sector, he's up by two thousandths of a second, but he needs a faultless run to maintain it. An Arrows has slowed him by a fraction, and when he crosses the line, it isn't enough. Schumacher fronts the Japanese grid. Schumacher! <laughs> Race 16 is just moments away. 14 minutes left. See you afterwards. Maybe it's the humidity, but the atmosphere is intense. Hakkinen has looked surprisingly calm. Schumacher searches for inner strength. The waiting over. Michael swerves right in what is becoming a routine move for the German. But Mika has the advantage and isn't letting go. Entering the first curve at 160 miles per hour, Ralf Schumacher climbs into fourth behind David Coulthard. Hakkinen immediately looks strong, leaving the Ferrari trailing. Further down the field, there's barely inches between the wheels. Car number one looks to be edging away. Schumacher's crew show him the statistics, putting into perspective the work to be done. Jean Alesi's Peugeot engine decides to blow in a big way on lap 19. The Prost comes to rest in the center of the track, bringing out the yellow flags. From the leaders, Hakkinen is the first to pit on lap 22. It comes later than expected for a two-stop strategy, though his pace suggests that is the case. Schumacher approaches his own stop. The German's in-lap is around a second quicker than Hakkinen's. The Ferrari crew get to work on Michael's car. He's stationary for just 7.4 seconds. But pit stops haven't altered the race positions. Once Coulthard comes in on lap 24, Hakkinen will once again lead the race. Schumacher is some 2.4 seconds adrift. Heavy showers dampen the circuit around lap 37, just as Hakkinen pits for the second time. About to catch the Jaguars in combat, this stop should avoid a tangle. He takes a fresh set of dry tyres and returns to the track. 
Unfortunately, Mika runs straight up to De La Rosa. The Arrows is frustratingly slow through the corners. Hakkinen loses precious time until Pedro peels off into the pit lane. All the while, Schumacher puts in some extremely swift laps. Heavy with fuel, Alex Wirtz finds the Benetton's handling is terrible. He becomes an obstacle for Schumacher, who's heading for the pit lane. Lap 40 and Ferrari need to work quick if they want to keep the lead. It's an outstanding stop, the quickest of the race. Having encountered more traffic, Hakkinen has barely come out of turn 18 as Schumacher exits the pit lane. There's now only 13 laps remaining and rain to contend with. Hakkinen, clamped in second, senses an opportunity in the final laps as Schumacher backs off. In reality, though, the German was never going to concede his most historic win. It's been a long time coming, but Ferrari have finally spawned another world champion. It's difficult to, to find proper words for, for such feeling. I mean, there was such an outbreak of emotion initially when I crossed the line. I mean, this, this conditions were difficult today. The rain, no rain, a little bit, a little bit more. The, the up going, the down going through the season, and then finally achieve it with a victory. The way we did it in, I mean, a fight until the, the last corner, thanks to Mika. Could have done it a bit easier for me. <laughs> uh, it's simply outstanding and, and no words for it to explain it any better. Michael Schumacher takes his third win in a row, mirroring the start of the season. Winner of Japan for the last two years, Hakkinen settles for second. Satisfying Ferrari's 21-year craving, Michael Schumacher wins his third World Championship title. Ferrari requires a fourth place finish in Malaysia to beat McLaren in the Constructors' Championship. Jaguar announced their new test driver for 2001 would be Thomas Schechter, son of Ferrari's last world champion, Jody. We've decided that uh, it's unlikely that somebody else is going to train our good drivers and we'd best get busy and uh, have our own training program. Don't tell him, don't tell him. <laughs> Michael Schumacher may have won the Drivers' Championship battle in Japan, but pole position in Malaysia will be fought with as much intent. Ferrari aim to secure the Constructors' title. Pole position would help that cause. Nobody's been able to beat Schumacher's current pole time. Except, of course, himself. He runs four tenths quicker. Barrichello saves his best run until last but he hasn't got the edge on Schumacher. McLaren are not out of the equation. The session is winding up as Coulthard knocks Barrichello aside. Hakkinen comes round to complete his final lap. He takes the front row spot next to Schumacher. While Barrichello is dropped to fourth. 
the race is long. We know we have a good car and let's see what happens. <laughs> The grid is already assembled alongside the Malaysian grandstand. This will be a tough race, not least because temperatures average 35 degrees. Second guessing the start, Hakkinen moves too early. He may be issued with a penalty like Coulthard in the US, but right now he's ahead in the race. Down to the first bend, Coulthard's around the outside of Schumacher and into second. Villeneuve moves up to fourth. They bunch up into turn two. Heidfeld and Deniz make contact, flipping De La Rosa in the process. With cars and debris sprawled across the track, the safety car is brought out the end of lap two. As racing resumes, McLaren teamwork comes into play. Hakkinen lets Coulthard pass, but Schumacher is dangerously close. Before he knows it, the Finn is moving backwards through the field. Schumacher takes second, Barrichello third. On lap five, Hakkinen pays the price of a jump start. Ten seconds in the pits. Coulthard extends his lead, setting the new fastest lap time. But triple world champion Michael Schumacher can never be discounted. After his stop-go penalty, Hakkinen runs 19th and last. On lap 39, Schumacher's second pit stop is just 6.6 .6 seconds. He will exit behind his teammate, who has yet to stop. Importantly, David Coulthard, who stopped one lap earlier, is not in sight. When Barrichello pits, Schumacher will take the lead. McLaren versus BAR at 185 miles per hour. Villeneuve outbreaks himself. Hakkinen's worked up to fourth. Johnny Herbert's last Formula One race ends with a bang. The Jaguar crashes out with rear suspension failure. Herbert suffers minor leg injuries. By the final lap, Ferrari are due 14 points. 11 more than needed for the Constructors' title. Schumacher finishes the season how he started it, with a win. Only this time, he's a world champion. Yeah, we did it. We won the Constructor Championship after all. Not by just taking three points, by winning and becoming third. That's just, I think, the right result what the team deserves. Schumacher's fourth win in a row, his ninth of 2000. Eddie Irvine is in the points for only the second time this season. With a 19-point advantage, Michael Schumacher takes his third World Championship title, ensuring his name goes down with Formula One's all-time heroes. Ferrari repeat last year's success, winning the Constructors' title by 18 points. McLaren are second again. Malaysia was the final Grand Prix for Brit Johnny Herbert. In a career spanning 11 years, he has won twice for Benetton and again most recently with Stewart. For the last season, he has partnered Eddie Irvine at Jaguar. My goal of, of being a world champion is not there anymore. And if that goal is not there anymore, then there's no use just driving around in circles just for the sake of being in Formula One because that's not what, what I want to do.